A while back, I had the pleasure of interviewing Robin on her experience using weighted vests. And in that interview, I went over a lot of the science behind these weighted vests. But instead of regurgitating the same information like a cat vomiting a furball, I'd like to introduce some new information coming from a small study that discovered two things that happen when you wear a weighted vest. In said study, the researchers wanted to find out what happens when people use weighted vests and the impact that has on long-term weight loss, as well as people's metabolism. So they recruited 18 people. This was a pilot study, so it wasn't meant to be a huge study, and randomly assigned them to a calorie deficit diet or a calorie deficit diet, including weighted vest use. These people were overweight and surprisingly, they also reported having osteoarthritis. I say that's surprising because uh, a weighted vest can really be quite burdensome. Yet, these individuals were able to use these vests regularly for six months. What's cool about this study is that uh, while they were actively trying to lose weight and body fat for six months, the researchers wanted to know what happens over the longer term, so over two years. In fact, the vesties, as I shall call these people using the weighted vests, only wore them for six months, not the following year and a half afterwards. The researchers point that uh, people struggle to maintain weight loss over years, and even if there is initial success. They mention two reasons for that. One is the hormonal changes that we've uh, been aware of for some time. For example, if we lose body fat, our fat cells called adipocytes secrete less of a hormone called leptin. This hormone, when you're well fed, binds to a region of your brain called the hypothalamus, and the neurons there, the brain cells, activate to reduce your feelings of hunger, since you're not well fed when you're losing body fat, at least physiologically speaking. Your adipocytes reduce leptin release, meaning less binds to the hypothalamus and the opposing neurons that stimulate hunger become more active. That's probably the most influential mechanism that researchers discuss, but make no mistake, there are other hormones like ghrelin will increase release from your stomach, or peptide YY will reduce or be less active after meal consumption. There's plenty more. Still, the focus on leptin is apt because the second reason that the researchers focus on is what's known as the gravitostat hypothesis, which has little to do with your stomach, but has to do with your bones. That's right, your bones. I cover this in much more detail in my discussion with Robin, so I'll link it below. But the idea is that your bone cells also release hormones as they sense the pressure applied to them. Hopefully you're seeing where the weighted vests might come in here. When you stand, the weight of your body presses down on your bones and your legs. Inside those bones are cells called osteocytes. I'll show you a real picture of what they look like. It's really cool. And these cells encase themselves surrounded by bone structure. Now, in doing so, they extend projections out to feel their surroundings. So think of you like holding your hand up against the wall and pushing against that wall. Now, if that wall flexes inward from the pressure being applied from the outside, you'll sense it in your hand like osteocytes do. One sense, the osteocytes release leptin-independent molecules that bind the same area of your brain, the hypothalamus, and influence your food consumption, but also your metabolism, which we'll get to. Anyway, if you suddenly load more weight on you, your bones have to sense that and release these molecules. But in humans, do we see weighted vests having any lasting impact? If we look at the weight loss data, we can see the weight change on the vertical axis, and the further it goes down, the better. The black line is the calorie-restricted diet only, and the dotted is the same, but including the weighted vests, so the vesties. Remember, people were only monitored to maintain their diet for six months, and we see equal weight loss. Nothing really revolutionary there. However, look at the two-year time point there. The people who didn't wear a weight vest regained all the weight. Fascinatingly, those that wore the vest, while they did seem to regain some weight, they were able to maintain some of the lost weight. The really incredible thing here is that these people aren't wearing the vest anymore. So the vest clearly did something to their physiology or something else positive happened that led to them being able to get better long-term results. But possibly more impressive is what happens to their metabolism. 
By the way, I've covered several studies on weighted vests and across multiple studies, I've designed a protocol for how to use weighted vests to achieve the best results, like what weight to use, how often, and more. All of that with the lowest risk and the least effort. I offer it for the Physionic Insiders. If you're interested in trying it out, you also get access to a ton of other perks too, live sessions with me to ask questions. We could discuss your journey using a weighted vest if you want, along with uh, written research reviews, a library of other protocols and guides, exclusive videos, and a private podcast that you can listen to while you wear your weighted vest. Again, all Physionic Insider included. The link is in the description. Check it out. If uh, we look at the metabolism data, we can see the change in resting metabolic rate on the vertical axis. This time, if it goes down, it's worse. Here's the surprising part across multiple fronts. One, the weighted vest retains metabolism while caloric deficit reduces it. That alone is a fascinating finding. The next thing is that metabolism is maintained, presumably over the two years. So even after weight loss and after ceasing weight and vest use, there's still a maintenance of metabolism. Now, there's a bit of assumption here. I should mention, because we're only looking at three time points with an 18 month gap between six and 24 months. But more remarkable to me, well, maybe not more remarkable, but also remarkable, is the fact that we're looking at resting metabolic rate. If you have some background in metabolism, you'll know what I'm talking about and why these data are so remarkable. Your total metabolism is made up of resting metabolism, what we're going over, but also physical activity and a slight metabolic burden from eating called the thermic effect of food. It seems reasonable that when you're wearing a weighted vest, your physical activity based metabolism might climb simply because you're, well, you're moving more weight. Or one could argue that uh, you might move less because it's an added energy cost. However, we're not talking about that form of metabolism. We're discussing resting metabolism. So if you're sitting calmly without moving around, your body is consuming more energy than normal, which is fascinating. It's especially fascinating because those who didn't wear the vest experienced an over 200 calorie reduction in resting metabolism. And one could argue that maybe they lost muscle mass, which is energetically expensive, but muscle isn't that expensive. So it seems highly unlikely this is explained in the vesties by simply maintaining muscle mass. I think something else may be going on here, possibly through that gravitostat mechanism that we discussed earlier. Either way, uh, these are fascinating findings. So in total, this pilot study indicates that weighted vests do two things. One, they help us maintain some weight and likely fat loss over long stretches of time. Two, they preserve our largest part of our metabolism, resting metabolism. Would love to see more data on this topic, but what's this? More data right here along with personal experiences and what to watch out for, I'll catch you over there, bestie and a vestie.